guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Dude. Oh, welcome back to my channel. So we're here for another one of our mass making sessions and we are up to week number 100, and, uh, sorry, 207. And what we are doing, we are doing um, 10 weeks of what we're calling mass making extra time. So for those people who don't watch my videos, we have done 100 weeks of mass making. We did 100 weeks of reruns. We're now doing a 10 week kind of bonus um, set of things that we haven't mass made before. And then we're going to be doing, you know, a rerun of the 100 weeks of mass making again. So what are we making today? Wow, I have got a lot of stuff here on my desk. So I thought we could make some fabric scrap samplers. Okay, so like the samplers that you would get with... Now, in my head, I can picture these. When I Googled them, I couldn't seem to come up with anything. Although I'm wondering whether I was just typing in, you know, the wrong phrases. Um, I'm going to describe them to you and then we're going to obviously make one and hopefully it will kind of make a bit more sense. But you know, like when you go and look at maybe wallpaper or I don't know, like maybe a new sofa or maybe carpet, you get those splayed out samples. Um, now, this might be a thing of the past as well, which is maybe why I couldn't get it to actually come up anywhere. Um, but the splayed out samples. So what I thought we would do is we could use a bunch of different papers and scraps and make little splayed out sample journal spots or journal you know, journal pieces. Um, so if you are wanting to make along, what are you going to need? I have got here some brads. Um, I've got, I did have a pokey tool. I can't seem to find it now. So I'm going to probably have to just wing it with a paper clip. Although I might have to stop the video and check if I can find my pokey tool. Because that would be a lot easier. Um, and then I've got a whole different bunch of papers. Now some of these are scraps and some are complete sheets of paper. But what you want to do is build up a bunch of different papers that are going to be in a splayed out kind of... Um, arrangement I suppose so I've got lots and lots of printables here and again I say this every week I've got printables because that's mainly what I have these days some have been coffee dyed on the back and some are just plain now if they are plain or this one which has got actually my Halloween kits on it what I will probably do is just cut out a section and then I'm going to back it onto something so the paper that I thought that I would use for backing onto was I bought along some fly sheets from book page and things like that. Now I've also bought along images from book pages because I thought they also would make quite nice little decorative pieces on one of our little splayed out sampler um, sheets. So yeah, we shall see how we get on. I don't know how long these are going to take to make. I haven't really kind of made them before, but let's kind of just play around and see. So you will need a bunch of scraps or other pieces of paper. You will need some brads. You will need scissors. You will need um, <clears throat> some glue if you're intending on backing your pieces onto something thicker. If so, you might need a, you know, um, glue spreader, which I always like to use an old sort of gift card or, you know, whatever. Um, and then something to obviously back them onto. Now, I'm going to use some fly sheet from some old books because I thought that was quite a good use of this. It's in a sort of grey colour, which I think will be, you know, perfectly suitable and, you know, fine to use. So let's get started and make the first one just so that you can kind of, um, you know, see what I'm actually talking about because I seem to be doing a lot of waffling and not much making. So let's take here, I'm going to take down from this side, <clears throat> I'm just going to take a couple of these. So one, and then I'm just going to take this one as well. Oops, like that, okay. I'm just cutting two out because I might as well whilst I've got the piece of paper there. And then I might as well take a couple of other things whilst I've still got the pages with me. So I might take one of these little jug pieces. It's quite nice, isn't it? So, yep, let's take one of those. And actually, I might take the whole thing there, which includes that sort of logo thing as well. So like that. <clears throat> now, depending on the shape of your page, I thought these would be quite nice if you actually made a sort of triangle top. Um, obviously, these are not really going to be suitable for that because, as you can see, like here, I haven't really got enough space. I'd be cutting into the actual 
you know, vase itself, which isn't really ideal. So this is some of my documents um, collection papers. And again, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut down a couple of portions that might be nice to use in here. So, because what we ultimately want to do is have a whole bunch of different pieces of paper, basically, that are going to then bunch together and look really pretty, you know, when they're kind of assembled. So let's just bring in a couple of these bits. So I've got here some of my butterflies, cabinet collection papers as well. So again, just going to cut this down here like that. Okie dokie. Now, probably don't want that quite as tall as that, like that. Okay. And then what we might even want to do is make maybe a couple of taller pieces. So let's just take that teacup. This is from my tea collection papers. So and then just take that down like that because then you're going to have sort of a variety of different widths poking out behind which I think would be quite nice and quite interesting again this is just kind of playing around and of course just because I'm doing this you don't have to do them you know as I'm doing them I mean traditionally if you know the, <laughs> the sample packs that I'm talking about because I've you know probably not described them brilliantly um, they probably are actually all the same size pieces. So, you know, again, experiment around and see whether you like the appearance of actually having all of your pieces the same size. You know, I just thought this would be nice because we're putting our own twist on the traditional, um, you know, sample packs. But of course, play around and see what look you like best. Because like I say, you might think, oh, actually... I like to have them all the same size. So for example, if we took this and then if we took a portion of here, so we could take this vase here in this corner. So if I just take that. Now, I mean, they're not going to be identical sizes because I'm not making a great job of cutting, but we just try and get them sort of similar-ish like that. And another reason why I'm backing them is because obviously, you know, this has got other things on the back. So it just kind of works quite nicely to back it because it then disguises what's on the back. Now I did also bring along some um, thicker sheets, which we could use. So we could then put this, for example, on here, just putting it down on that sort of section there. And if I just cut that out, okay. Like that. I'm not really doing a very good job of mass making here because normally we do assembly line style things and um, I don't seem to be doing that at the moment. I seem to have gone off completely at a tangent and been, yeah, just mass making or just mixed up making, perhaps I should say. So, right, let's try and keep with the program and, um, yeah, do it in a more conventional way. So got my glue so I'm just going to take a couple of my bits and just glue them down onto my fly sheet now the reason why I've used fly sheet um, rather than anything thicker is because I thought well I probably want my pieces to be reasonably thin still but probably not quite as thin as you know just flimsy paper so oops because I want them to have a definite feel of um, Oh gosh, hold on, I've got glue problems already, that's not great. I want them to have a definite feel of being like those those sample packs. So I've, you know, in my head, I seem to recall them being, and like I say, I really don't recall them at all because I can't really even picture whether they were carpet or whether they were wallpaper or what they were. But anyway, in my head, whatever it was that they were, whatever of those items that it may be in my mind they were thicker pieces so I don't want them kind of flimsy I mean yeah lately I've been making quite a few kind of what I would call paper fillers and I do stock the paper fillers in my shop from time to time on my website um which I really do love but these I want to make more substantially so you know they're not kind of a paper filler they are a more robust piece if that makes sense so 
that's why I'm backing them. But I definitely didn't want them to be thick card, if you see what I mean. I wanted them to still be flimsy-ish. Flimsy-ish. So they've got a bit of bend in them, but not, um, yeah, not kind of paper thickness. So I thought this was quite a, you know, a good kind of get around is use the fly sheet from some book page. It's a good use of, you know, or good way to use that up as well. And then hopefully it's going to be like a really nice thickness because it's going to give us, you know, thickness, but not stiff, you know, stiff as a board kind of pieces. So yeah, hopefully we're going to get just the right thickness that we want. So just gluing down a whole bunch of different bits. So I'll take this one and glue this down. And I love the way that we're going to be using, you know, images from books mixed in with digis and, you know, all different bits and pieces. I think that's really nice. So this is a really good scrap buster. And hopefully we're going to end up with, you know, a whole bunch of really nice different things that we can use. So now I'm going to keep mine, well, famous last words. In my head, at this point in time, I'm, oh, I'm going to turn that around actually, because then I'll probably get rid of that edge. Uh, in my head, I'm going to keep mine quite plain. I'm not going to go too over the top with the decorating. Now I've put that kind of warning sign there saying in my head, because who knows what may happen once I get decorating and you know get making but in my mind I'm thinking keep these sort of yeah keep them simple keep them simple and keep them you know just kind of plain and and nice and then what you could do is obviously when you come to use them if you wanted to add extra decoration then you could always do that couldn't you so, you know, you can play around once you actually come to use them. If they need, if they need more decorating, who knows, they might not, you know, we might kind of think, well, actually, they're just right, just as they are. So, might as well just fill this fly sheet straight up now. Now, you're probably thinking, now, why didn't she just do this before she came on the video? And now, the only reason why I didn't is because that's not the nature of the mass making videos. Um... For anyone who's joining my channel you know for the first time the point of the mass making sessions are literally to kind of like set aside an hour an hour a week for just you know mass producing things that we use on a regular basis in journals so it's not all about um you know doing the boring bits off camera or anything like that it's just about sort of being efficient so setting aside setting aside an hour a week for doing some basic things where you're going to produce hopefully you know quite a bit or quite quite a few perhaps i should say quite a bit it's not really proper english but yeah quite a few um items in quick succession for your journals so that's why I didn't do all this up front, you know, before videoing, because I just thought, actually, that's not the purpose of the mass making sessions. You know, when we, when we first started them, I can remember kind of saying, you know, I know these are going to be a boring, laborious process because we're going to just be doing the same things technically, you know, over and over again. But that's the purpose of them is just to... I'm just going to just put a couple of things in here just to kind of make use of that extra bit of paper. Um, yeah, the purpose of them is just to actually be efficient. And by setting aside just an hour a week, you know, in no time at all, you will have built up quite a, you know, substantial stash of stuff ready to put into your journals. And, you know, I think... Yeah, I mean, definitely for me, that's definitely worked out. So hopefully you guys have found the same. Um, you know, I know that, like I say, they're not probably the most exciting videos, but I think they're a really good hour, you know, well spent because we do achieve a lot 
and in the long run that's going to save you a ton of time when it comes to making your journals you know if you've got even half the things made when you come to fill a journal it's going to cut your time by probably you know a third and I mean obviously if you're if you're in kind of the zone of making a journal you'll know it takes a phenomenal amount of time to make a journal so any help is is all good isn't it so right let's cut these down now so i'm just going to take take a couple that we're then going to put together as our little swatches okay and then these are going to be used just to either stuff into a pocket or you could just you know pop them onto a page they're going to be secured in the corner with a bread or in the middle i guess actually the middle might be better because that was probably more how those fabrics fa fabric swatches i don't know who knows fabric or paper or whatever those swatches were um i think they were probably actually secured in the middle rather than the corners um so yeah we're just going to secure them in the middle here so like that and obviously the beauty of the bread is that when you put these into a journal, if you didn't want these on a, uh, 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 in a pocket, what you could do is you could actually open your bread out and you could then secure it through the page. So, you know, they're going to be kind of like multi, multi-functional pieces. So just take this little piece here. Now, I think, like we said, obviously in the conventional sense when these would have been made you know or when i've seen these made whatever whatever my memory is kind of trying to tell me i feel like they would all have been the same size but we are just doing a twist on this you know for our junk journals so obviously i think the best way to do them is not the same size because they're going to look you know they're just going to look boring aren't they if they're the same size at the front they're just going to be a a little stack of paper so i think have a few different sizes and then they're going to have that layered up kind of appearance so i'll just do that one on the back as well and you can probably see these are still flimsy you know they're not kind of like now really thick or anything like that i could have coffee dyed this paper to be fair this book page i think it would have looked really good and actually probably this gray fly sheet as well would have looked good if i had um coffee dyed that but never mind so we just layer these up and like i say i'm going to actually do them through the middle because i think that's going to be nicest or more similar more similar to how they would have been and like that okay so I'm just going to stop the camera and see if I can find my pokey tool. If not, I'm going to have to use a paper clip. So hold on a second. Right, I'm back. So, yep, it was in with my, um, you know, binding type stuff. So, right, let's put that like that, like that, and like that. And then whilst I stopped the um, camera, I just quickly coffee dyed those pieces on this piece of paper so they're just drying at the moment okay so poke that through and then just bind those so using my lovely brads that the lovely michelle who runs the facebook group that she bought me so thank you so much michelle if you are watching love these brads so much oops if I can actually use them, that is. Oh my goodness, what's going on? <laughs> so, fingers and thumbs, as my mum would say. Oh my goodness, what's going on with me? <laughs> oh, perhaps these are not going to turn out to be a very good idea. I mean, the alternative is you could use your crocodile. And, of course, you could use the thinner, not the thinner, the smaller circle. Oh, let me just try and put this brad through one at a time okay you could use the um smaller of the holes to punch your hole and you know then you're not going to need obviously a poke tool at all so poke tool at all there we go 
aren't they just so gorgeous and they just splay out like those little sample things would have done so like that and like i say you could then tuck them into your pockets you could put them on a page or of course when you actually bind your journal what you could do is squeeze your brad back in poke a thing in the page and actually attach your whole piece to a page so they're just really cute aren't they so we are just going to mass make a bunch of these um so what i'm going to do i'm going to start by gluing on some more pieces onto some more of the fly sheet this is just drying from the coffee dyeing anyway um and then i'm going to cut them all out and then we will you know ink them up and then punch the holes and put the brads in so we're doing them sort of um assembly line style and that's what we normally do in the mass making sessions so we can just now relax have a nice time have a catch up and yeah just generally kind of be very productive and just relax for the next kind of 45 minutes or so so just put that to one side right bring in my next my next sheet of fly sheet here okay so let's just cut out a few more bits and pieces that we're going to put down so i hope everybody has had a good start to their week um again if you watch my channel you'll know that i generally film these videos on a monday to go up for you guys on a tuesday so yep for me my week's only just started my daughter is home from school today she has got a cold so you may be able to hear in my voice i have had a hideous cold for about uh, it might be about five days actually now um yeah i mean touch wood i feel fine now um i didn't feel all that great last week but i do feel fine now so um yeah it's it's all good but that being said, I was sneezing and sniffing and spluttering and yeah, not great last week. So um, unfortunately, I wasn't really able to film too many videos. I filmed on Monday and Tuesday and then by Wednesday, the cold had come out. So I wasn't really able to film any more. And um, yeah, I just spent the week then working and um, doing things, you know, on my laptop and working, making things to put onto my website in my shop. So no filming taking place because it just wasn't wasn't conducive to filming but yeah my daughter you know she has now caught it and yep so she is now skiving off school no she's i mean she's not skiving off school she's genuinely not feeling too well but more than that she's obviously coughing and spluttering a lot and since covid you know the schools i think really do not appreciate you sending the children in when they're kind of um coughing and sniffing and things like that so yeah she's now home so i have put her to work as well so there's no point being home and doing nothing so <laughs> yep she's wishing she'd gone to school no she's um sorting some book pages and things like that to put into the shop so i'm hoping to do a big restock now i don't know when it's going to take place but i will be doing it um over the next few days but also with maybe um oh what do you call it black friday in mind so yeah i will be trying to you know put things in and then run some sort of black friday offer um but because obviously you know the nature of how long it takes to list things and things like that then i might be putting things in at a staggered pace if you see what i mean so yeah i will be putting things in over the next you know well i think black friday is next wednesday i think i'm right in saying it's when uh no i think it's thursday so yeah i've even got that wrong i mean it doesn't bode well does it so yes i think it's next thursday um but i will be hoping to put some things in and i'm hoping to do like a really good restock so i have been like i say very busy trying to be super productive you know whilst i've not been able to film so actually i'm just going to take that off um so yeah hopefully going to be putting lots of goodies on over the next yeah let's just say week and yeah just keep your eyes peeled because like I say I'm not sure whether things will be going on staggered or whether they will all go in go on in one you know one big hit I'm not quite sure what 
you know, which will be better or easier to do. So yes, I shall be putting some things on, hopefully including maybe a couple of journals, um, but hopefully as well, some other things, maybe some stuff that I haven't done before. Um, and then some old favorites that I've had lots of requests for, you know, could I put back into to my shop again? So yeah, just keep your eyes peeled and hopefully there'll be lots of yummy, lovely things going on there in the next um, few days. So, right, let's have a look here. Now, this is obviously a children's book page. Again, yeah, that's what my daughter's been doing. She's been sorting out book pages to be able to put some book page bundles in the shop as well. So, unfortunately, I'm not sure how many of those I'm going to have because I'm not sure how many books I've actually got really left to do those. So, we shall see. We shall see. We shall see. But, yeah, all being well, there will be some book page bundles in there. But... I will have to see. Okay. Uh, are there any other nice words or little pictures or anything that I could put from here? Let's just leave that one like that. Okay, now this, again, I've got some from a book page with this gorgeous console table, which I just thought, isn't that lovely? So, yeah. Oh, they've called it a sideboard table, so... But I thought this would be absolutely super in these um, little pieces that we're making. So, yep, got a chair here from another vintage book, which I thought would also be lovely. So what have I been up to? Well, other than kind of working, not a lot really, to be honest. Um, the weather has been horrendous. Now, I'm sure that it had already been horrendous when I filmed last week and yeah we'd had lots of flooding and things like that so we've continued to have lots more rain we've had a couple of dry days but yeah on the whole it's been pretty rainy um but yeah we've had a couple of dry days to be fair and so saturday what did we do on saturday oh well, saturday um went with a friend and my daughter and we took the dog out and we just went and went for a walk around um, the lovely little town Arundel, which I did do a video quite a long time ago now. Um, oh, let's just see whether I want to. Oh, let's have this. Dr. Foster went to Gloucester. So, yeah, kids book. Dr. Foster went to Gloucester. That little riddle from when we were children. So, yeah, that might be quite nice to actually include in the little bits um yeah so the place that I filmed that time when I did spend the day with me video so very long time ago that was um oh gosh probably like maybe three years ago or something so it's such a beautiful town and um yeah we went over there and we just I mean it was quite cold on Saturday but dry so we took Bo the lovely um our lovely doggy and yeah we just did a walk around there and then just stopped for a pot of tea and then um came home and I cooked a roast dinner so yes now I have to say my cooking's kind of like gone out the window completely I've just I well just really frankly stopped cooking so nobody seems to like my cooking nobody seems to appreciate my efforts anyway um, yeah, you know, the kids are kind of like different times that they want to eat and, you know, they're doing things and stuff like that. So it just feels like it's pointless, to be honest, most of the time. So, um, yeah, my cooking has kind of, not saying suffered, but stopped. <laughs> Let's just not beat around the bush. It's pretty much stopped. Um, so, yeah, anyway, on Saturday night, I actually cooked a roast dinner, which for me, that felt like it was the first time I'd cooked anything like, you know, proper food for so long. And it was so nice because I had not been well kind of all week, you know, with my cold. I just felt like, you know, my body was really kind of like screaming that it wanted to have something really healthy to eat. So, yeah, I was really pleased to actually have a, you know, a healthy meal. So... 
yeah that's what we had on saturday night so that was kind of it really for saturday and then sunday um what did we do on sunday well sunday we had a really really fun day actually because um my eldest son who you know i don't really very often spend kind of time with him to be honest because he's always just busy doing his own thing and you know i mean he's nearly 21 now so of course he doesn't want to be you know he doesn't want to be hanging out with me and you know rightly so um so yeah don't kind of like really see that much of him to be honest um so yeah anyway he was obviously at a loss for something to do so hung out with him and my middle son and my middle son's boyfriend and my daughter um so I said what would everyone like to do we all agreed nobody had any money or anything so you know we did not want to do anything that included spending any money or anything like that um so we just went and had a costa and then we came home and I said well why don't we just play some board games now I'm going to cut these off of the frames so they are just square bits these um and these are just from my vintage topper um pieces oh I'm so sorry this is from my Victorian collection papers I'm so sorry I totally forgot to be saying which um papers that I was using and I do apologize for that because I normally do try and really make an effort to say what I'm using so yeah completely apologize um yeah anyway so yeah we just came home and we played board game well I say board games no we didn't play board games we played one board game we played um the game called the game of life <laughs> has anyone got that game I don't know I hadn't heard of it funnily enough um until a couple of years ago and then I worked with a chap who you know I said to him I oh I love board games you know and he said oh have you ever played the game of life I said no so he said, oh, you know, it's really fun. So yeah, he recommended it. And um, we bought the Game of Life. And it is quite a good game. Now I have to say, it does kind of drag on quite a lot. It's a little bit like Monopoly in that respect. Oh, I also bought along some of my um, Savile Row papers because I thought these would be perfect for turning into, you know, the little kind of pieces the size pieces that we need so I'll just take some bits from here um yeah these are my Savile Row um papers so I haven't used these for quite a long time but I do really love them I have to say yeah so um it's a little bit like Monopoly <laughs> in that it drags on so we've had it for years and I don't think we've ever actually played it right the way through because when we got it out I said to my son's um, partner you know I said um, have you ever played this he said no I said no I said weirdly I'm not sure that we've ever played it right the way through so we were having a debate have we played it right the way through none of us could really remember whether we had or not well once we got playing we all decided we probably hadn't played it right the way through because it's quite long and laborious um particularly because none of us could really remember how to play it so every time we landed on a certain type of square or anything like that we were having to recheck the rules which of course meant that the game was taking forever to play so you know it was constantly kind of oh check the rules oh no oh for goodness sake have your spin you know just yeah and my boys when they get together um <laughs> they just get very very silly so lots of silliness ensued and yeah I mean we just had a really fun day you know that kind of like wholesome wholesome day um and hey I cooked again so yeah I just did like a sort of pasta for lunch and um well I say lunch it was about four o'clock so with some garlic bread and some salad and um yeah, so I felt like I'd done a, a lot of cooking this weekend compared to no cooking for like yonks. I mean, not that you could really class it as cooking if I'm truthful. It was, you know, to say cooking is very, very loosely termed. Probably a lot of people would say, what? You call that cooking? I, I called it cooking. Not sure other people would really class it as that. But anyway, and... Um, yeah we just had like a wholesome weekend then we watched a movie um 
it was called what was it called it's called 99 houses i think it was called so yeah uh my son chose it and it was quite a good movie but kind of horrible to be honest it was very very upsetting um yeah very upsetting really so it was on netflix it's called 99 99 houses or 99 homes 99 houses i think um yeah anyway it was a good film but yeah quite a serious serious watch so not really one for if you're wanting a sort of light-hearted comedy or anything like that but anyway we had a nice time um you know doing what we did for the whole day um and yeah i think that's pretty much it really and like i say my daughter's now home today not feeling too brilliant so yeah that's kind of kind of it really with what we've been up to so right i'm going to glue all of these bits down now so i've got my glue here to the side okie dokie and to be honest i also um was thinking that i would use a couple of plain bits of paper and i haven't used any plain bits so you know perhaps we'll make a couple in a minute with some plain plain pieces of paper as well so we're just kind of you know just see how it it goes so that was my victorian london collection of papers the the pink there with the the building um, and this again is my vintage documents collection. Yeah, and I know that I talked about this last week, but honestly, can't believe like how close we are to Christmas now. Obviously, I have not started Christmas shopping or anything like that because, well, it's just not even entered my mind <laughs> to start anything like Christmas shopping. Oh my goodness, no way. No way, not this early. So, yeah, but my goodness, Christmas will be here before we know it, won't it? It's crazy how quick this year has gone. So, um, yeah. There we go. So, my oldest son, he's going to um, Prague next week. So, yeah, he's going to... Um, yeah, he's going to Prague. He bought it on... There's a thing over here called... I think it's Groupon. Um, again, I don't know whether that's an international thing or whether that's just a you know thing over here that we have here in the UK. But it's called Groupon, and I'm so sorry about this. By the way, it's just coffee dye all over that. Um, it's just a tissue to mop out my glue. Uh, yeah, it's called Groupon. I don't know whether it's everywhere or you know I'm sure you have similar things, but it's just lots of discounts and things like that. So. He managed to get, this was several, several weeks, or it could have even been several months ago, to be honest. I lose track of time. There was an offer on there where I think it said it was like a two-night holiday for £99. I think it was £99. I can't quite remember. Um, and he said to me, oh, mum, do you, you know, why don't you do it? I said, oh, you know, I don't think I'll do it. But anyway, he did it. And um, he got... I think it's a two night break in Prague, which I mean, I've never been to Prague, but I did used to work with someone funny enough who she came from Prague um, and, you know, she said it was absolutely beautiful there. So I'm sure he's going to have a fantastic time. I think when the offer first came up, I think it was for January, but you could then pay a little bit extra and you could move it. So he moved it to November and I think he added a night or maybe it was a three night break in the first place. I'm not too sure. Um, anyway, you know, regardless, he's going for three nights. I think it's next Wednesday that he's going there. So yeah, he's obviously, you know, trying to kind of save up for ready to go there. Um, so that's what he's doing. So very exciting. Yeah, let me know below. Are you from Prague or, you know, have you been to Prague? What's Prague like? I've seen it in films. Um, oh, I'm trying to think what the film was, but it looked absolutely beautiful. I can't think now what the film was, but anyway, it looked absolutely gorgeous. So I'm sure that they're going to have a very, very lovely time. 
Um, yeah, I don't know quite what they're planning on doing, but, you know, I mean, they're obviously youngsters. They will probably be drinking and things like that, I'm sure. You know, having fun like you do when you're young. So, yeah, probably not what I would consider having a good time. But, I mean, if I went there, mine would probably be going around the Christmas markets. I'm sure they'll go around the Christmas markets as well. I think Prague is known for its Christmas markets. Again, I might be just making stuff up there, but I feel like I've heard people talk about the Christmas markets in Prague. So, yeah, um, I'm sure they'll have a lovely time anyway. And hey, I mean, that's a bargain, isn't it? £99 for the two two nights and like I say it they're actually going for three so I can't quite recall whether they had to pay extra or whether I've got the details wrong and it was perhaps a three night thing in the first place but anyway I mean very you know very cool isn't it to be going anywhere let's face it so it's always nice to just get away okay I've got some more fly sheet here so we'll just use some more of this Oops. must have like a whole bunch of different tissues on the desk from all other projects that I've been making because um yeah I thought this was the one that I had been using but no I grabbed a different one obviously I just want to say massive thank you to everybody who's placed an order um, recently, you know, either on my Etsy shop or my, you know, my website shop. I can't tell you how much I appreciate your support. You know, it really is, yeah, just so very appreciated. And I hope that you really love anything that you have purchased. So, you know, be it digis or actual you know physical things from my website so i hope that you've loved whatever it is that you've purchased and that you are having a nice time using it because that's you know that's what it's all about isn't it after all okay yeah these are quite um therapeutic to make actually i mean there's something quite therapeutic i think about just you know cutting and sticking to be honest so although this does seem a little bit you know tedious I think it's quite nice to do I mean you could obviously use these you know without gluing them onto something else but for example like these ones which are from book page they would obviously have book page on the back which then you know you couldn't then use the back for journaling whereas by just gluing them onto you know this sheet of paper You've then made them a fully usable piece, haven't you? Because you could then actually use them to journal on the back of. So, you know, the printables, obviously, most of them I've used have been plain on the back anyway. But, you know, at least now, if you've used book page or anything, you could also be using that um, on the back as well. And the other thing that I have got is I've just got one of my coffee dyed pale, pale? No, coffee dyed plain sheets um that come with some of my kits i used to include them with all of my kits and yeah i stopped doing that because to be honest i had one or two people kind of say oh you know i've got loads of your kits and you're always including that so stopped including it and um yeah but it does come with a lot of a lot of kits but yeah i just had one sheet that i happen to have you know ready printed out it's just on 120 gsm paper so again you know reasonably kind of like finished paper and obviously again it's just providing a plain blank background from which to you know stick my pieces on like that. okay <clears throat> okay 
Oh, I watched the morning show the other day, um, and I've talked about this quite a lot, but yeah, watch the morning show. Now, I've finished the morning show, would you believe? So, yes, I can now cancel my, um, you know, Apple TV. However, my son is now watching, well, he's watching something else first, and then he said he also wants to watch the morning show. So, yep, I'm stuck with Apple TV for a little bit longer. Um, but... I did resubscribe to Netflix, and I'm sure I talked about this last week. I resubscribed with ads. I mean, it's not been a problem at all. It's significantly cheaper with the ads, and yeah, like, I've really not noticed them particularly. They're not kind of like every two seconds or anything like that. They haven't really kind of inconvenienced me at all. So, yeah, it's been good. Well, hence we were able to watch that film yesterday, because... Um, well, I do have Amazon Prime because obviously I subscribe for the delivery. Um, but yeah, otherwise we perhaps would have been struggling to find something that everyone wanted to watch. But there we go. Keep looking out to see if there's anything on at the cinema. Oh, which reminds me, anybody who is a Hunger Games um, fan, so... Oh, gosh, it must be, well, quite a long time ago, maybe six years, maybe seven years or something since the original Hunger Games films came out. Film, films, film. Anyway, since they came out. Um, and, oh, my goodness, we loved them so much. All of us loved them. So, yeah, the kids and I, you know, we all loved them. And, um, yeah, I read the books, three, three books, but I think they did four films. Um, yeah, read the books and obviously watched the films. The books were brilliant. The films were brilliant. Absolutely loved it. Well, apparently there is a new Hunger Games film coming out. I assume that means there was a new Hunger Games book. It obviously <laughs> just completely, you know, I obviously completely missed it. Um, I only really read when I go on holiday, to be honest. So, yeah, I'm not really surprised that I would have missed it because... I only then look for books when I'm going on holiday. So, yeah, no no surprise, really, why I would have not noticed a book coming out. But anyway, it's... Um, I think my son said it's coming out on fri Friday. I'm not sure whether he meant this coming Friday. I, I feel like he did, but that sounds very soon, given the fact I've seen no trailers for it. Anyway, um, if it is... Oh, my goodness very very excited for that because wow we loved those um hunger games you know uh films they were really 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 good i mean they're very yeah quite raw and quite sort of like hard hitting but oh my goodness so 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 good so yeah really really looking forward to that because i feel like there's been nothing on at the cinema for just the longest time it's just been well so boring to be honest been waiting and waiting for something decent to come out so yeah I mean I don't know what it will be like I think he said it's a completely different cast because this time it's going to be the story of how the Hunger Games came to be um so yeah it's not going to be Katniss and Peter and or who were the other people? Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, it's not going to be them. It's going to be, well, yeah, the story of how it came to be, which, you know, obviously will be pretty good. If if you follow the Hunger Games, you know, then I'm sure you'll probably agree that that would be quite an interesting, good watch. So, yeah, looking forward to seeing that. So, yes, if you are a Hunger Games fan, keep your eyes peeled, because I feel like my son said it was this weekend but like I say I could be completely wrong with that but either way looking forward to it because um the other ones were so good that yeah I'm sure this one will be equally good even though it's a different cast I'm sure it will still be good I mean sometimes when they have a different cast it kind of spoils it doesn't it but because this is a different cast, but a different story, if you see what I mean, because it's the story of how the Hunger Games came to be, I think they'll get away with it. So, yeah. 
if anyone didn't watch the hunger games um is it donald sutherland is it donald sutherland yeah Kiefer sutherland's dad um he's got like the beard hasn't he the white beard and stuff oh he plays president snow the chap's name is oh he's so good in that role he's scary very scary yeah he's um well, just doesn't take any prisoners. Let's just put it like that. You would not want to cross him. And of course, Katniss, she did cross him. And oh my goodness, she felt his wrath. But yeah, they're really good. Really good. I, they're quite gory, to be honest, you know, so they're not necessarily for everybody. But yeah, I did like them, I must say. Right, okay. Have I got any more fly sheets here? Mm. Oh, I have got those as well. Just, you know, because we might want to have a little bit of a contrast for the... Um, oh, that one's going to be a bit flimsy out here. Mm. Well, it might be okay. Let's do this. Okay. Um... Okay. I've got my little heater. It's it's behind my um desk today. It's kind of like behind my head. I've done it like this for the last couple of weeks because um I normally have it like on the floor, but it's on the floor across the room. I mean, it's not a very big room to be fair, but the heater is then right by the door so I suspect that all the heat is going straight out the door and because my room's so messy I can't physically shut the door anymore so of course you know there's no way to trap the heat in it is just you know out to the elements so yeah I've decided to put the heater behind my head and um yeah touch wood I think it is a lot better to be honest because I think I wasn't really getting the benefit you know obviously whilst it was you know, the other side of the rim, and the heat was just kind of zapping through out of the door. It was just, yeah, pointless having it on. But yeah, I think it's a bit better now having it this way. Put that there. Okay, so this will be the last sheet that I do of gluing down. This is from my French collection papers, this one. Like that. Okay. Oops. Just pop some of these down. Yeah, this will be the last sheet that I stick them down onto. Like that. I mean you really could decorate these up if you wanted you know um add like some lace or some little flowers or you know you could put a flower in underneath the brad you could pop a tassel on them that would be really nice you know any of the um little things that you could use to decorate you could you could obviously put die cuts on them or anything to you know any kind of um little decorative pieces i think would look pretty good on these but I'm going to try and keep them pretty simple and just decorate them, I think, you know, if I need to when I come to use them because um, sometimes I struggle to actually have plain pieces. You know, my pieces tend to be quite heavily decorated. I know, <laughs> it's shocking, isn't it? But yeah, they tend to be quite heavily decorated and so actually finding a piece that's more neutral is more of a struggle, so... I'm going to try and keep these a little bit sort of not dulled down exactly but yeah I suppose dulled down um so that they're then going to go with pretty much anything and everything Okay. 
yeah i don't know why i get so many colds to be honest i just seem to um pick them up very easily and once i get one i seem to struggle to then shake it off i'm much better since i work you know on my own now um you know just me, me in my room when i used to go you know physically to work um into an office oh my goodness i literally had colds all the time all the time so yeah i'm much better than i was but definitely i'm someone who's very susceptible you know if there's a cold going you can guarantee i'm going to pick it up so yeah if anyone says to me ever oh i've got a cold i think oh gosh I'm just going to avoid you like the plague because i just know i will i will get it i don't know why some people get them you know so much but yeah i'm definitely that person who always always picks up a cold so Oh, is that going to just about fit in there? Probably not. Oh, that's really annoying. I wonder if we could do it in two. Like that. Okay. Might as well just get that down onto the page, might we? So, because you never know, we might just want little bits like this. Okay, let's just now assemble some. So, again, what I should do is assembly style these and, you know, cut them all out and then put the holes and do it like that. I don't know whether there's really much time to do that now because I seem to have squandered such a lot of time by just gluing my pieces down, but let's see. So let's just take a few bits from here. Now this is that sheet that I then, you know, coffee dyed quickly whilst I was looking for my pokey tool. So they're not quite so, um, you know, bright in colour, <clears throat> which I think is quite nice. Okay. There we go. Okay. Like I said, I mean, you could do these with like sort of a um, triangular top, if you get what I'm saying. Um, you know, I think that would look quite nice. I haven't done that because some of the pieces that I've used, I would struggle to, you know, form a triangle, if you see what I mean. You know, it would end up cutting into the piece itself. Um, but I think a triangular top would work nicely. So, yeah, definitely that's something to play around and experiment with. Okay. Right. Let's just layer, start layering up some of my bits and pieces. Okay. And you really could, you know, make some really nice different looks with these. You know, I'm being quite boring probably, but yeah, I think you could, you know, achieve quite a few different different looks. So this one, what I might do is just take that in half and then, you know, that just fits on there better. And put it even with that. And then we could probably have one of those little labels. Like that. Okay. Like that, I think. Actually, might want to have that one there. Okay. Now I've got a couple of labels here, so I just cut those ones down like that. Oops. Yep, I haven't done any gallivanting around or going out or anything like that. Um, that seems to have gone out the window now. So, yeah but I might pick it back up in a couple of weeks, who knows, but I've been, um, yeah, pretty boring again. Back to my usual boring self. Usual boring service resumed. Okay. Let's bring 
this one in. Right, some of these are quite soggy because obviously I've only just really glued these down, so I have to be a bit careful. Otherwise they're just going to kind of like smoosh out, you know. But yeah. Oops. Oh, that one's... My daughter's being very quiet and weirdly I cannot hear any book pages being torn. So she is clearly skiving and not doing the work. <laughs> not doing any of that work that I that I set her or assigned her. So yep, she's She's obviously gone off and uh, decided not to do anymore. She'll have all her, her excuses ready as to why she's not doing it. She loves an excuse, that girl. Right, there we go. That one's quite nice, isn't it? Although, actually, I'm thinking I might have to switch that paper. Oh, this one would look quite nice with that, wouldn't it? Because it's just got that touch of pink and blue. Oh my goodness, doesn't that look gorgeous? So, I mean, I haven't really spent a long time, you know, uh, deciding what to put with what or anything like that here. You know, I'm sure I could probably achieve better matches, but, oops. I mean, that one that we just put together there hopefully is kind of giving you an example of just how lovely that they can look you know if you get the right combo they can look just so so pretty I mean I love those kind of pinks together they look gorgeous don't they so oh do you know I actually um I obviously glued down more than I thought so yeah I obviously got very carried away with the gluing didn't I but let's just take this like that. Okay. So yeah, I mean, quite a good use of the fly sheet, I think, isn't it? So now I'm just wondering whether this might look better on the pink. So it's a little bit small on there. But what we could do, maybe swap it out for, maybe swap it out for this console table or something. I mean, it's quite a different, nice way to use your book images as well, I think, isn't it? I mean, I've used a few different ones here. We've, you know, we've got a couple from the children's book. We've got, um, you know, some from this furniture book and things. So, yeah, I think it's quite a nice, different way to use, you know, a few of your book images and things, which sometimes, you know, it can be hard to find different ways to use things like that, can't it? So, I think this is... You know, just something different. And it's quite fun to be able to match or mix and match, you know, the book images with like digis or, or scrapbook paper or, you know, whatever it is that you're using. You know, it's, um, yeah, quite nice to kind of like mix and match, isn't it? So, like that. Now, they're both from my Victorian... Um, <clears throat> Victorian set but yeah they are quite nice aren't they now I'm thinking either her or those flowers would look really good on here oh Bo is just beside my desk just sound asleep in her bed so she does not like moving <laughs> hey who can blame her why would you why would you move if you don't have to So, well, that's not really the right piece, is it? Um, I'm going to struggle now to find a good, good match for this. But what else you could do is, to be honest, I mean, 
I've been using obviously the bread or you know we've only done we've only done one because I've been dragging this out so long but yeah I mean if you didn't want to use the bread you could use an eyelet so for example here we could use that or we could maybe even use a red one which will pick up the red from the from the heart oh yeah that one's nice isn't it and then you could even put some ribbon through so let's quickly do that now what have i done with my pokey tool again well, I know it's here because obviously I would stopped the video to bring it in. Oh dear. The question is, what have I done with it since that point? Yeah. Do you know, I just had this horrible feeling that I actually wasn't going to, be able to find it. Just like, oh no. How can you lose things so much? Actually, to be honest, I'm not going to even use the pokey tool. I'm, yeah, because that was quite a fiddle. So let's use the crocodile and I'm just going to put the, you know, the small hole and then my brad will just thread through much easier, easier like that. Okay. You have to be a bit careful, obviously, if you use your crocodile, because if your brad's got quite a small head here, you know, there is a risk that you could obviously, um, oh, what's the word? What am I trying to say? What am I trying to say? Oh my goodness, what am I trying to say? Oh, that you know, your hole will be bigger than your brad. Right, let's just quick ink these up. Okay. I didn't ink those other ones, that last one. Um, but I think it looked nice anyway, to be honest. I don't think it even needed inking. I think it still, you know, looked really pretty, so... I like that okay so yeah let's take that and like I said I mean you could play around with these and experiment with having your pieces in the corners uh you know your brad or whatever in the corners you could experiment having um you know pointy corners on your pieces I mean this one to be fair I could po probably get away with having pointy corners shall I try that oh do I want to no because I don't think no, I don't think that's going to look quite right. So, yeah, right. Let's not have the pointy corners. Let's just go for it like that. So, again, just take my crocodile, put my hole through here, do my eyelet, which I always struggle with my eyelet clamping. So, let's keep our fingers crossed that it goes okay for this video. Yay, it actually did, would you believe? That was just more luck than judgment. And then, obviously, you know, your pieces do still splay out. Well, they, they would do normally, but I've obviously clamped that really tightly shut. So, oh, well. If you didn't clamp your eyelet so closed, these would still splay out. For some reason, I've clamped mine very tightly shut. So, a little bit of a word of warning there. If you're using an eyelet, don't clamp it too tightly shut because you're going to then not be able to splay your pieces out. I don't know quite why that happened, to be honest. Normally, my eyelets are very, um, you know, not baggy, but they're not tight at all. So that was just, again, typical because I didn't want it to be in there tight. Of course, it was really tight. So, yes, don't don't use that method. But it's, it still makes a nice looking piece, doesn't it? But it's just now not so functional, which is a bit of a shame, but anyway so this one oh again i'm going to use my hole punch yeah definitely that's much easier than the oops the pokey tool especially because i'm going through several layers you know it's um yeah much quicker there we go and then this gorgeous one so i'm just going to yeah ink this a little bit around the edges didn't ink the back of the others but only the first one I don't think it really needed it but yeah I'll just quickly do this one now I now I'm thinking of it okay a 
There we go. Right. Let's try and make sure we've got these in the right order. I think I had them like that. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, aren't they lovely? Really, really, really pretty combination of colours, aren't they? Yeah, love how that looks. And then just, yeah, take my top dial. And, you know, you could use different coloured brads. You know, if you've got any fancy brads, you could use those. I'm just obviously, you know, keeping mine very basic. But, yeah, I think they're, they're quite nice basic, to be honest. I, I don't dislike them being just plain like that. But then you could always, you know, add some extra little bits. So I'm just having a look to see if I've got anything laying around the table. You could just have something like maybe some pearly trim or something like that just on the bottom. Or, you know, on one of the layers or something. So, you know, you could always decorate them up after the event, you know, if you felt like they needed something. So, I mean, that one, I could just put that little bit of pearly trim just across there. I'm just going to use my hot glue for that. Okay. Like that. You know, I mean, super simple. Nothing kind of drastic or anything like that. But it just adds a little something extra, doesn't it? <clears throat> so, yeah, quite like how that looks. And then, yeah, just quickly ink up my other pieces. Could always then, you know, put a little label or something on here, which I forgot that I had these little coloured pieces, which I had intended on incorporating. But... For example, and again, this is my vintage ephemera. Um, I think it's like set four, but just thought actually that would go quite nicely somewhere. So yeah, I mean, you could just have that stuck on there just above that pearly trim, really. Looks quite pretty, doesn't it? Let's just glue that down. Okay. Like that. I mean, like I say, I don't, you know, actually think they need anything. I think they look lovely. And you've got, obviously, all that journaling space on the back. I love the fact it's kind of hidden because, you know, you could have different things written on all of the different sides. Let's just quickly ink that up. Just because that grey looks a bit boring, doesn't it? There we go. Aren't they just so cute? Really, really, really cute. That one we didn't do anything else with. We could always put, um, you know, some ribbon or something like that in that one. I'm just grabbing this because it just happens to be laying around. I'm not necessarily saying it's the right ribbon, but it's just laying about on the desk. So, yeah, I just, oops. I mean, to be honest, maybe not even tie a bow in there. Like I say, if you're going to use an eyelet, you really want to not, not clamp it closed too much. But, I mean, I don't mind that. It's, it's, yeah, not as functional as I'd hoped because, like I say, I did actually close that eyelet pretty, you know, pretty full-on squished. But if I hadn't done that, it would have been very, very usable. Usable, useful. All of the above. So, yeah, let's just take those legs down from the ribbon there we go so yeah very cute isn't it i mean that is a bit very annoying part that it's covering her face but never mind um so yeah i really hope that you like them hope you have fun if you decide to make some i think they're quite you know quite cute and yeah just a nice little different thing to be able to pop into a pocket and just something really um you know quick and easy to be able to mass make get rid of quite a lot of different scraps and things using your you know your book images your digis and everything else um and they're quite kind of fun to be able to then assemble i mean you could always kind of glue all your pieces down in the day take them downstairs while you're watching tv cut out your pieces probably assemble them as well while you're downstairs watching tv or you know cut out your pieces ready for assembling the next day so yeah have fun if you decide to make some and yeah let me know um you know what you think and thank you so much for watching i will see you guys in the next video so thanks a lot then bye